All right, what's up, guys? It's Silent, and I want to welcome you to another episode of the True Exclusive Podcast. Now, one of the reasons why I started this podcast was for us to inspire each other and to also learn about the world and things that are happening right next to us. So in keeping with that intention, I always knew I wanted to do an episode centered around autism. So what exactly is autism? I'm going to read it here because I don't want to mess up the meaning. According to the CDC, Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, autism spectrum disorder is a developmental disability caused by differences in the brain. People with ASD often have problems with social communication and interaction and restricted or repetitive behaviors or interests. Now, the latest research from the CDC shows that one in 36 Children are now diagnosed with autism, which is an increase from the one in 44 children just two years ago. So for today's conversation, I didn't want to just bring on an autism expert. You know, I wanted to bring on someone who was dealing with this on a daily basis, trying to maintain a normal life and a career. And I knew exactly who I wanted this person to be. And that is my cousin, Angie. So we're going to welcome Angie to the show. Now, Angie has her hands in many pots. She's a mom. She's a wife. She's, she has a career. She has the kids. She damn near had a bakery at a time. Um, but uh, so welcome. I'm, I'm going to let you introduce yourself because I'm, I'm not going to. Uh... <laughs> Hi, my name is Angie. As my cousin said, I am a mom. I have two children. Um, my oldest is seven and she's autistic. And I also have a three-year-old. Um, I don't know. I don't know what else. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, first of all, I want to thank you for being open to have this conversation. I, I've heard that when a child is diagnosed with autism, a lot of times the parent might feel, you know, lonely, like no one can really relate. And I think... Mm -hmm you know, sharing your story will show people that there's actually a larger community out there of people who yes, yes, there is. go to this. Mm -hmm. So I guess prior to your situation, what was your relationship like with autism? Did you know anything about autism? Um, I really didn't know much about it. Um, my sister, actually, her son um, was diagnosed before my daughter. Um, but I really didn't know what it was about, what that looked like. Um, she had a lot of things going on. She had a lot of things on her plate and it was something that I don't think she was able or ready to share with the family. Mm -hmm. Um, so it was like a very distant thing that I knew. I actually, when I was in college, I did, um, research on it and I did a paper on it loosely based on my nephew. That is the extent to what I know about it. It is one thing to know some information about it and another to experience it with a, you know someone in your family. So um, I really didn't know about it at all. So take me through the journey of um, finding out that your daughter had autism. Like, were there any signs or? Um, for me personally, it took me by surprise. Um, my daughter was diagnosed, I believe shortly, either shortly before her second birthday. Um, and I was a stay at home mom. I was with her 24 seven. I was monitoring like all her milestones and she was hitting them for the most part, but her, her main issue was she had a speech delay, which is typical for autistic children. Um, a lot of them do have speech issues or delays of some sort. Um, so it started off with that and I got her into uh, speech therapy. And when you're going through that process, you get evaluations for um, from a psychologist, a speech therapist, occupational therapist. You go through a different a few different types of evaluations and no one ever said anything about autism. So sometimes these things are not caught right away, depending on what that looks like during the sessions with the child. So it took me for, let me see about, 
it took about a month or so into speech therapy that I started asking questions. And this is why I always encourage parents to engage with the therapist or whoever's involved um, with evaluations or anything like that to ask questions, to just be curious about things and pay attention, observe things because that's how it came out for me. I asked a question or I mentioned, um, you know, I'm trying to do flashcards with her and she's not really looking at me while, you know, I'm trying to show her certain things. She looks away and she just doesn't seem interested. And that actually caused her to give me a referral just to see what's going on, if there's potentially anything going on, because she did notice the same thing as well. And I had a referral to um, a psychologist and within five minutes, she told me that she is displaying uh, signs of autism due to her lack of eye contact. So it was pretty so, shocking because I was like, just off that one thing you noticed. And mm -hmm. so I kind of was in denial, but I got her the services. I got her the help anyway, because I'm like, you know, it couldn't hurt. So um, yeah, that's how that started. So what was the, uh, well, you said you were kind of in denial at first. What was the initial reaction with? you and the family? Um, I was like completely shocked. I was like, there's no way because my nephew is autistic and there's nothing like that going on with her. Like I had that one example and I was just like, I don't see it, you know? And that really goes to show you that it's really different for each individual. And it's a learning process no matter how long you've been dealing with it, how long you've been parenting a child with autism, it's a learning process. So I have learned that um, obviously repetition and routine is, um, is important, but also I like to use visuals to help with things. Um, like my daughter just needs like extra reinforcements to let her know what to expect, you know, and the order of things, um, you know, how things are gonna go and stuff like that so um she's in school so i don't have to do this all day long <laughs> only on the weekends um but even in school she has a, a routine they stick by and um they do visuals and you know like kind of like a reward system just to keep her focused and you know knowing what to expect so by visual what do you mean by visual um, like it could be, um, you ever seen like in the classrooms, you know, where they have like something on the wall showing at eight o'clock is circle time, nine o'clock. Oh, okay. You know, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Uh, like you can have any type of visuals, like there's different kinds. Um, it can be a poster, a board. Um, I like to use like, um, something smaller that she can carry around, you know, throughout the day and stuff like that. So school, let's say school, that's a routine, repetitive. Mm -hmm. So how do you deal with times when like maybe there's no school or there's you kind of out of a routine? That that's those are the hard days. <laughs> um, it, it really depends because for me, I work from home now. So that really kind of it it restricts what I can do with her because I need to be focused on, you know, my job. But um, I try to give her um, like activities to do and, and doing things like that with her, whether it's work, any type of crafts and things like that is very difficult because I have to be by her side, helping her through it and things like that. It's not something I can just say, oh, go go and do this over there. You know, right, I right, have right. to be involved. And so it's it does take a lot of my time. So, um, you know, she'll do certain things like that. Um, she likes reading. A lot of iPad time, <laughs> <laughs> if I'm being honest, which is actually calming for her. Um, when it comes to screen time, sometimes that's kind of like restricting or not giving it to an autistic child. It's kind of out the window. So, um, yeah, I have to like play around with different things and finding what um, what works for her. I saw something. I, I don't know if it was something you posted or maybe I read it somewhere, but 
I think it was something you posted on the vlog and you said that going outside is not going to always be what you imagine with an autistic mm -hmm. child. Mm -hmm. Can you speak to me a little bit about how that is and maybe how it was for you in the beginning, how you reacted to it to versus mm -hmm. to now, how you handle it? Um, going outside is definitely for me personally, a little out of the routine. So anytime we do that, mm -hmm. you never really know what you're going to get. Um, in terms of behaviors, for instance, like my daughter, you know, some, some children are triggered by noise, lights, or different type of environments. Um, I don't think she gets too triggered by those things, but it literally could be anything that throws her off that can cause like a meltdown. And a meltdown is uh, very different than a normal tantrum you would see from a child. A meltdown is something that really requires a lot of effort to um, to help the child through. And sometimes you don't always, you, you can't always figure out what's the cause of it, you know? Um, so I have learned that I have to limit where I can go sometimes, or I have to know more information about where I'm going. Let's say I'm invited out somewhere, you know, to like a kid's birthday party or something. I need to know what kind of place is it? How far is it? Um, and I, I come prepared with like a, a bag for her with like all her little favorite things, mainly like sensory toys. Those things help keep her calm and focused um, when she's having, you know, a rough time. It's not foolproof, but you know, these are things, these are the steps that I have to take when I'm considering going out with her. And can you tell me a story maybe of a situation that might have happened one of the first times and, and how the public reacts? Because a lot of people mm -hmm. don't realize how they're reacting to these situations. Um, there's one moment that stands out to me. Um, I haven't had like too many bad experiences when it comes to like other people in the public but um, I've had overwhelming experiences. So I, I relocated to, um, to Connecticut from New York. So it was, I believe the first year I moved here, um, I was with both children. So my son was like a few months old and we were walking through um, like the main street over here and they had, um, like a black party type of thing. And we walked through it and I told them, you know, on our way back from the store, we'll, we'll stop by. So we were just looking around and there was a bounce house there and my daughter wanted to go through and I told her I didn't have any money for it. Um, and the, the guy, you know, in charge of the bounce house was kind enough to just let her go. I let her go, but the problem is it was a huge thing and she got to the top and was too afraid to come down. And I'm watching her from the outside and you know, she, she can communicate, but she still has difficulty communicating when it comes to, um, emotions and, you know, mm. just saying what she needs at, at that moment. So um, I'm going around in circles, trying to find out where she's at because she's like pacing back and forth and all the kids are like rushing through because they want to get past. And um, she, she couldn't come out. So they wanted to remove all the children out so that I can go get her. And I had to, I had to make the decision to leave my son behind to go inside and go get her. And um, it was very stressful because everybody's behind us. You know, the kids are getting impatient. They want to play and everybody's like, what's going on? And she was hysterical. She was stuck there and she wouldn't move. And I had to go running in there and grab her with my son in the stroller with people I don't even know, but I, I had to go and do it. And, um, for the most part, like the, the ladies around were really nice. Um, 
and they watched my son while I was able to get her out. I had, I literally sat on the floor. This is in the street. <laughs> I sat on the floor trying to calm her down because she was also very upset that she had to leave. And she was screaming and crying and I had to get her shoes on. I had to get her moving and she would not want to go. She was hysterical and people are watching like, what is going on? You know, they don't, they don't know. Yeah, right. And, um, it was just very overwhelming. And that was the first time that happened to me. And I started learning that I'm like, I just can't do everything that, you know, a typical child would want to do like she just can't do it um maybe in a different setting maybe with less people i don't know it just that was not the right moment for her and um it just made me realize like i have to go about things a little bit differently because i had to essentially choose between my my kids and that i felt so guilty about that and um yeah that was a really hard moment for me obviously i remember three years later <laughs> wow uh you mentioned that melt meltdowns are not typical tantrums. What exactly mm -hmm. is over when when you say uh, autistic mm -hmm. child is overstimulated? Um, you know, it, it's hard to really understand fully because I don't I don't get all the information I need from her. But from my understanding, it's just basically the senses are overloaded. Sometimes it's the touching, the way, you know, with the way the body feels, the way the body reacts, um, hearing, seeing. Um, there's just a lot of things that go into into being overstimulated. Um, you know, just like any other person can get overstimulated. Imagine how you feel when you feel overstimulated and you're just like, I just need to isolate myself. I need to decompress it's maximized with with these type of kids and and what is stemming stimming um stemming. it's basically basically it's, it's like self-stimulation so something that just like usually kids do it like to calm down to relax or just makes them happy sometimes it's out of you know frustration or um you know, any emotion, but for the most part, I think it's just something that feels good to them. So it mm. could really be anything. It depends on what their sensory needs are. So for instance, I'll give you an example. My daughter, she rocks back and forth, but she's always like this. For some reason, that's common to her. Um, she also likes um, deep pressure. So she likes when I grab her like this and squeeze her. Mm. She likes okay. to smush her face into my face like i don't know it's just something about that contact that she feel like it makes her feel good okay i know it's probably like so confusing <laughs> no but no but you know it's funny because i think we kind of all have mm -hmm. things that we we yeah. do to calm ourselves too in a sense yeah so I what made you tightened on another level right yeah yeah what yeah. made you want to start sharing your story um, and, and, and blogging. Cause you do a lot on the blog. You do workouts yeah. and not only sharing with that. I started sharing simply because I needed an outlet. I mm. felt lonely. I felt isolated and motherhood alone can be kind of lonely. Um, but raising a child that has uh, special needs of any kind that, that is definitely like increased. Um, so I started, not necessarily because I wanted to, I felt like I needed to. Um, and then from there, I like the desire to help people understand more or just to give them, you know, some type of example of what it looks like, not only for the autistic child, but for the parents as well. And so um, I've been doing that and, you know, people feel comfortable to ask me questions or, you know, I know people even from high school who are going through the experience now and, um, and they come to me and say, you know, can I ask you questions and, and, you know, just for general advice. And so, yeah, that's, that's basically how it started. And, and what have, have you, if anything, what have you learned about yourself since you started? 
Um, I think that I have learned that I am capable of being vulnerable. Um, I'm capable of helping others. And I, I think I'm a lot stronger than I feel. <laughs> and um, it's just been an interesting journey so far. Yeah, it's, I, it, it's a lot. <laughs> Um, you, you just mentioned feeling a lot stronger than what you feel. What, mm -hmm. what does it feel like in those moments when you're, you know, and just, I, even, even in general too, being a mom yeah. and, um, I feel like half the time, I don't even know what I'm doing. I'm just winging it. And I have come to learn that other moms feel that way too. And you can look at other people on social media and you're like, wow, that person has it together or she's so patient, she's so loving and how does she do it all? And I'm, and then when I have these conversations with them, I'm like, I don't know, I don't know how I do it. And it makes me feel like, okay, so I'm, I'm not doing too bad. <laughs> yeah, I was having this conversation recently, I'm like, Social media will really make you feel like someone has the perfect life mm -hmm. if they don't show, you know, because like I said, you show a lot of things so people mm -hmm. can see that it's not what it seems like. It looks like it's together, but I go through stuff, too. Yeah. But a lot of people on social media, you you looking and you're like, wow, not even mm -hmm. knowing that they could be depressed, gone, exactly. you know, exactly. all kind of things. Yeah. Um. That's so true. So what would you say would be the most challenging part about raising a child with uh, autism? Is there one? Um, I think it's, I want to say um, not, um, not knowing what the future holds, not knowing mm. what to expect, you know? I mean, obviously, you don't know what to expect in any person's life, but um, you, you just really don't know. And, um, and also just having support, having support makes a really, a really big difference. And sometimes you don't always have that. Um, yeah, I think those are the two biggest struggles for me personally. And, and what kind of support system do you have maybe and versus from the beginning to now? Mm -hmm. to um, I have for the most part, like my immediate family is supportive, but they're not exactly involved in my daily life. Um, it's kind of always been that way. I've always been kind of a little far away from everybody. Um, so they don't get to see the day-to-day -day things. You know, I talk about it, of course, but it's not the same. Right. Um, so I, I get some support, but it's also hard when another person can't relate, which is why mm. I have to find the community that can relate. And that's another reason why I continue to share on social media because I find other moms going through the, similar things and um and they they understand like they make their own content and i could look at something even if it's not a hundred percent relatable to my child because like i said every child is different but i'm like wow i totally get that and for someone watching what, what kind of ways can they show support for someone who's caring for someone with autism um, on I think I think asking questions on you know what what it looks like for their child, what kind of um, specific needs um, the child has, how can they be supportive to you? Like just asking, what can I do for you? What what ways can I could I show up better for you and your family? You know, I think just doing those simple things of wanting to know more and asking how they can help makes a big difference. You don't have to do anything, 
you know, huge. It's just being there, you know? Yeah, I hear you. And, uh, you know, I talk a lot about mental health and depression. Mm -hmm. Um, How do you deal with that? If you do, when you have moments of just feeling like, what the hell is going on? (laughs) Because I know (laughs) we we have those moments. Yeah, Um, it's definitely been a roller coaster. I find that talking about things helps. So even if I'm talking to the camera and nobody's really on the other side, that helps. Um, But just doing things for myself on a daily basis, you know, helps me to not stay in that funk sometimes. Um, You know, growing in, in my faith, that has been huge for me because I feel like I can't rely on myself all the time, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, it's really just finding practical ways to pour into myself on a daily basis, which is what I'm always talking about. I'm always talking about self-care and, you know, it's all related to mental health as well. And I just feel like it's important for for, uh, parents of special needs children to find those things that can work for their lifestyle. It's so true because sometimes I'll see a video you post and, and you're just putting a mask on your face and you're like, just is making you feel better or whatever. And it's mm-hmm. like, yo, it's so true. Like, it, it might sound silly, but you know, sometimes if that's all you got, yeah. <laughs> you, know? you know, take a hot shower and just mm-hmm. maybe take extra time in the shower or whatever the case may yeah. be. So it, it makes a lot of sense. What do you think is the most uh, common misconception about someone raising a child with autism or just about the autism spectrum in general? Um, That autism is not um, something that necessarily affects the child's intellectual ability. Um, It doesn't... I think there's... I don't know, back in the days when we were younger, when you heard special ed, it wasn't always a good, you know, thing, right? And so children with special needs of any kind tend to, you know, have to be in special education and it has nothing to do, and again, this is not every case, but the majority of the time it has nothing to do with how smart they are. It's behavioral, it's social, it's a lot of things, um, you know, it's just a lot of kids on the spectrum are more than capable. Even if they can't speak, they understand, they have feelings, and, um, and we just have to be mindful of that. Earlier, you mentioned how in the beginning you were in denial, but you still went ahead with the steps. For mm-hmm. maybe a parent watching who is in that de- in denial stage, what what would you say to them? Get the help. Take all the resources that you can get. One, resources are not easy to get, especially now after the pandemic. Like things have been really difficult to get services for a lot of children. Um, so I'm all for getting whatever help you can get whatever is being offered. If you have um, things that you're unsure of, always ask questions. Even if you need someone to help you understand better, if you're not understanding what exactly is going on or how something is affecting the child, like always, always be open to learning and, um, and just having conversation because sometimes that can really go far so i always say like if if they're saying that the child could benefit from any type of service any type of therapy just take it it cannot be harmful it can only be good you know better yeah and on the flip side for those watching who might feel like they're not strong enough as you what and and i know you said in retrospect for you you might feel like that Mm -hmm. sometimes but what would you say to them like, they just feel like, you know what, I can't do this. You can. You can do it. It's just, it's not the life that you envision for yourself. Things are not always going to be the way you expect them to be. 
but you can handle it. It's just don't be afraid to ask for help or support whenever you need it because going through things alone is, it puts a lot more pressure on yourself mentally, physically, because there's a lot um, to the process, especially in the beginning um, that can be very overwhelming. So I, I say, don't stay quiet and and reach out for help any way you can. Amen. Um, I mentioned you used to have damn near a bakery. Can you talk <laughs> to me a little bit about, because you don't do it anymore, but talk no. to me about why, because I know that took a lot out of you. Why you don't do it anymore, and what was it like yeah. to try to maintain that kind of business? It was a lot of work, but... I started that with my sister way before I ever had any kids. So, you know, I I had the time. <laughs> I had the time and I also grew in the desire of learning a new skill. It's definitely not something that I always knew how to do to some degree. I just one day said to my sister, you know, wouldn't it be cool? We took like a baking class at Michael's. Oh, and wow. That's that's how we started it. And we're like, we should do a side business. We always said that we wanted to like have like a bakery together. Um, my sister still does it because people know that she, you know, she used to bake and things like that. So she'll do that for like close friends or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, it's a lot. It takes a lot of hours. You have to focus and I can't lose any more sleep. <laughs> so, and once I had my daughter, like I took a break and then I went back probably like a couple months later. But once I had my daughter, I just did not like how certain people would not respect the, the life change that I have gone through. And, you know, they want things when they want things. And mm. my priority was always my child so right. I had to take a step back for that which actually worked out because then you know within a year or so I learned about her diagnosis so oh, I had wow. to I had to be with her every step of the way which is why it took me so long to go back to work so and how is it now because you have Noah how is mm -hmm. that the differences Oh, balancing man. that it well first of all noah um a totally different experience with him like he's shown me a totally different side like of what i expected things to to be like when i had a child you know all the milestones and he's talking all the time like he has full-blown conversations with me at this point and he's three wow. years old. So it like blows my mind all the time on, you know, just the differences. It It is like night and day. And um, and he looks out for his sister. He it's like he already knows that she needs a little extra help. And he just picks up on that. Um, sometimes he gets annoyed and frustrated with her because of like her little stimming and her little ways. But at the end of the day, like he looks out for her already. And it's just, it's pretty cool to watch. And now you have the vlog. Tell us about the vlog yes. and, and what can people <laughs> expect? Where can they go to see the vlog? So my vlog, um, I mainly focus on fitness related things because that's just a process that I was walking through, you know, after having Alina and then after having Noah, I learned that, um, it's, it's not just about weight. It's about like, it helps me mentally. It helps me, um, it helps me get through day-to-day -day things because it's something that I have for myself. So it's something I like to share with others and also show them just because your mom doesn't mean you can't do these things. Mm -hmm. Like you just got to find a way that works for you. So that's mainly what I share on my blog, but I also share some, you know, insights to like, um, things going on with my daughter, also my son as well. But um, so it's a little bit of a little bit of everything. And also recently, me and my sister, who who has a autistic son, we recently um, 
open their own Facebook support group for other special needs moms or parents or caregivers. So that's like really, really new, but um, we wanted to provide support like we wanted for ourselves. We're providing mm. it for others. So I like to end interviews with just speaking something to ex existence that we want for our lives or maybe for the world or both. Um, hmm. Something that I want to see, I guess, um, just real general, basic, more understanding and love. It's so crazy because that's not general and basic, <laughs> which is crazy. <laughs> you know, a lot of times well, I say I, common I sense is not common. <laughs> True. Because yeah. people in this world are crazy as hell. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, uh, yeah, thank you for sharing your story today. And um, I'm pretty sure someone out there is going to relate to this. And no problem. Thank you for having me. Maybe feel a little hopeful. Yeah, yeah, I hope so. I always say if I can just reach one person, then that's good enough for me. Amen. <laughs> if you're that one person, leave a comment and let us know that it was you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Peace. Until next time. Bye.